Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. So Kevin Duru and Sir Spence have amazed us again with an incredible update to Xeroscope V2. They're calling it Xeroscope V2 XL. And in my opinion, it makes video that in some ways is better than Runway ML Gen 2. They actually called them out in a tweet. The other thing is I think this is way more capable of creating a, a creepier nightmares than anything I could imagine coming from Gen 1 or Gen 2 and Runway ML. So if I had to give um, a text to video model, the title of uh, most likely to create something that is going to give me an AI induced nightmare, this model would be it and it's called Xeroscope V2 XL. So there are a few things to cover here. Um, Spencer made a tweet last night and I was gonna put this out last night, but I was way too tired. So we're doing it today. Here's what he calls it. So basically they describe Xeroscope V2 XL as a new 1024 by 576 pixel text to video model designed to take on Runway ML Gen 2. So there it is. Basically the way this works is it's very similar to the prior model uh, Xeroscope V2. The difference is it's capable of making bigger images and longer videos. So what that means is the way you use this is generally you start with their 576 by 320 pixel model, then commit to a high res render by upscaling with Xeroscope V2XL. So it's a new model in itself, but it is also sort of a step being added to an existing workflow that was already working pretty well with Xeroscope V2. Of course, you can use this right now. They still leverage um, vid to vid in the automatic 1111 text to video extension. I really like the automatic 1111 ecosystem just because it's so pervasive now and you can run it locally and there's just a lot of great support available on GitHub and lots of other sources. I also recommend if you're playing around with this to actually go and join Kamenduru and Sir Spence's um, Discord they have a lot of great information there and I've actually done some debugging there as well. I was really considering putting like a disclaimer before this video because uh, this video that they've posted as a demo is incredible and showcases some of the technical capabilities of this model. However, it's also kind of creepy and um, it's all, almost as nauseating with how uh, creepy some of these creatures are. Of course, it's kind of cool that they're nearly perfectly replicating a lot of you know, coral reef corals and uh, octopi and cuttlefish and sort of soft-bodied sea animals. But um, some of this is just creepy. And of course, with um, the whole uh, deep sea incident, it's an interesting vibe to be striking. But, uh, but yeah, if anything, what you should take away from this is AI technology in terms of text to video in open source realms is getting freakishly good. Runaway ML is no longer the only company that can do this. Uh, and you should be scared of the deep sea even more, and even AI appears to be very disturbed by the deep ocean. But yeah, I, I think the coolest parts of this are um, the tentacles and how aware they are. Of course, some of this stuff is melding into itself, but if you were going to pick something to copy, this would be a pretty hard thing to do. Now, what I will say, I'm hoping we can eventually see more dimensional shapes coming out of this, because one thing we know Runway ML Gen 2 does quite well is dealing with dimensional objects and subject. And here, you know, we have a lot of eyes looking at the camera. We have some creatures that have arms that are moving around. However, it's a little bit less coherent. I would say the clarity is better though. The one thing that I've never quite understood with the appeal of Runway ML and their text to video models is that the clarity of them is never quite good. It's always a little blurry, it's always a little bit occluded, or there's a lot of really strong um, depth of field being used, or you know, a, re a really close focal length. And for those of you who don't know, this is actually a common tactic for how AI models cheat in occluding detail and improving performance or making things look better than they actually are. If it feels like your eye is being tricked to look in one place, sometimes that's actually intentional. And what I love about this is uh, it is so wildly nauseating that uh, my eye has no clue where it wants to go. There's, there's glowing corals everywhere. There are eyeballs looking at you. Uh, it is just wild. There are a few other demo videos I'll include here. There's a full demo reel that I've cut a little bit by Dot Simulate. I've linked him below. He is the one who made this footage. Uh, you should check out his channel. He only has a few hundred subscribers, so you should definitely go his way and give him some attention along with Kamenduru and Sir Spence. This technology is crazy. It is so cool to see the open source arena really taking a step forward, even compared to Stability AI. There are a lot of people who still argue that Stability AI, although they release their models, is not necessarily a true open source initiative because they still have hundreds of millions of dollars to buy GPU time at Amazon. And you know they, they have a lot of products that they're actually wrapping around their stuff. 
so I'm gonna try to install this later today and hopefully get some video out for you guys. Uh, as always, this is actually available on Hugging Face right now. That's linked in the description. And the steps for installing it are actually simpler than the prior version of Xeroscope. I think it's important to note that since this model is so much more capable, it does take more resources. So for that reason, you're gonna need at least 16 gigs of VRAM to do uh, the full upscaling at at least 30 frames per second. I think the other real big win here is the frame rate, right? And of course, with that, it's going to just take more computation. So, as always, if you like what we're doing, uh, please like and subscribe and share this video on Twitter or wherever you think your friends might find this cool. If you want us to do more of a technical deep dive, let me know. Um, sometimes it's hard to gauge how technical I should be, and I think we're getting a better sense of that. And uh, yeah, as always, I hope you learned something, and we'll see you in the next video.